Those are the only notes. Good morning, friends. I'm glad you are with me. This is my wife, Kate, and uh, yeah, she'll be here in a second. We are, I print, I like my digital notes. This is just the honest truth. I don't need to print it out. Kate can't handle looking at my digital notes on a screen, and so she has to have a paper copy in her hand, which is sitting on the printer. So she just, whoop, she just ran off to go grab that printed copy. All right, so today we're in part three of seeing yourself as God sees you because we're realizing that this world's viewpoints, this world's culture, this point, the world's uh, values, this world's um, basically everything that they do is based off of an existence in the kingdom of darkness. Now, because we have been pulled out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the son he loves, we have to change our viewpoint. Second Corinthians 5.17 says, Behold, everything is made fresh and new. And so we have to change our viewpoints so that we're not trying to live God's plan for us, His existence that He's designed for us within the kingdom of light and it trying to do live. it from a viewpoint from the kingdom of darkness. It's ridiculous. And that's why so many Christians feel like they're failing at the Christian life is because they're trying to do it. They're trying to do God's things with a viewpoint, perspective, mindset, all of that from the kingdom of darkness. And then they wonder why they're failing. Sorry. Welcome. Hi, I'm Josh. This is Kate. I'm jumping straight into it because I am so excited about today's <laughs> class. It is so, so good. And it it's so easy. Yeah. Once you get your head right. And that's the big thing. That's what Romans 12, 1 and 2 doesn't say that your spirit is wrong. It doesn't say that your body's wrong. In order to be transformed, it takes changing this thing up here, getting the brain to line up with your new kingdom realities so that you can walk in them. Yeah, because remember, you are led by the spirit. But the spirit still is filtered through your soul to rule and reign your body, right? The number one thing Paul wrote in his letters was to increase in knowledge, wisdom, and revelation in him. Mm -hmm. Not, I pray that you'd be led by the spirit. I pray that you'd be led by the spirit. I pray that, no, he prayed that they, he was glad that he prayed in the spirit more than them all. Mm -hmm. But that's what leads to understanding, wisdom, and revelation. Do what other people says is right for you. <laughs> that's why we live, right? I have this think, uh, I'm, uh, this thought. I don't know if I should do this or not. Let me reach out to my 37 closest friends and let everybody give their opinion of what I should be doing. And then we'll kind of do this poll thing and whatever the most people do, that, that's what God's saying. <laughs> well, how messed up is that? That's not Christ-like at all. Do you see Jesus like, hang on, I need to consult with my 12 disciples to find out what <laughs> they think. Of no, what does Jesus say? Get behind me, Satan. Like when one of them isn't lining up, he's like, right. he didn't no. stop and go, mm, he's like, Peter, oh, you, you know might be what? right. Let me consider mm. that. I see that you have good feelings there. Paul didn't do that with the prophetesses. He wasn't like, oh, I see your heart. You know, he's like, no, I need to go. <laughs> he stayed focused on the mission. Where was his confidence in his flesh? Where was his confidence in his soul? His confidence was in Christ Jesus. Now, before we go any farther, I got to tell you that we have a bunch of people joining us in the call, even though you haven't heard from them yet. And that's at rootbible.com. Wow, that goes really fast, doesn't it? <laughs> and so like join, but you can't join because you don't have enough time to see it. Join. So what was you it? can join us by going to rootbible.com. Our current course that is live interactive is the real you. And that's what we're talking about. Finding out who the real you is so that you can live God's way. And so you can join us in the live call. Hello, everybody that is joining us. I'm glad you are here. Marty even moved over. We're so glad you're He's here, part of our Marty. reboot uh, course. I and love Kelly. That. Kelly's here. We got Ruby and Drew. Ruby and Drew and Carter. What in the world? <laughs> <laughs> they're so identifying they're by their kids' names. That's all right. Hey, it's adorable. <laughs> I think sometimes right. we're Wyatt. So, all right, right? It be, wouldn't be hard. So today we're talking about how we can have confidence in doing anything that God wants us to do. And how many would say, that 
feels kind of impossible. I've never had that experience. That I, if God says, oh, you know, cut your fingernails, I can be confident. I can do that, you know. But if God says to do bigger things outside my comfort zone, I'm not really sure that I can have confidence moving forward into that because I know my own lacks. How many would say that's that's how you've thought for a long time? I know or my insufficiencies. Right. I know my natural tendencies, and that's way outside of what I can do on my own. And so I don't, you know, I don't, no one has told me anything even close to that that I can do that. Minister to my neighbor, mm -hmm. raise my kids to prophesy, heal the sick, mm -hmm. right? Uh, to do it myself, to lead others around me to the Lord, to to be called to share uh, the truth with mm -hmm. uh, someone in the grocery store. Things that seem outside of natural, and then we start to be challenged because we're drawing our confidence from our soul, and the can, unrenewed portion. It can be even as silly as that one person at church that annoys you. And you your feel flesh. like God, and you feel like God <laughs> says, "Hey, you need to go have a conversation with them." <sighs> like uh, me, they're always hunting me down to have endless conversations about stuff I don't care about, and now you're telling me I'm supposed to go to them. What? I, I am, I'm not confident in that, God. You're gonna have to give me 17 signs through other people <laughs> in the first song of this worship service. And a blizzard. In order for me to take that that uh, action. Right? That's how we talk with God way or, too often when we don't see ourselves the way that he does. Or we go Old Testament and we put out something that's referred to as a fleece. Raise your hand if you don't know what that means. It's song about... Okay. Yeah, in the a Old Testament. A particular story. In the Old Testament. One of the people that God called to do some big things, he's like, I don't know if that's true. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some uh, fleece from a sheep outside. And if the next morning, if the wool is wet and the ground is dry, I'll know it's you. And so then he does it. And the next morning, wool is dripping wet and the ground is dry. And he's like, nope, nope, sorry. I, I messed that up. What I meant to say is tomorrow morning when <laughs> I put that wool, wool out, <laughs> if the wool is dry no, and the wet. ground is wet, oh, yeah, yeah. then I'll know it's you. And so the next morning, he goes out and the wool is bone dry and the ground is all wet. And see, so he's like, okay, now now I know it's God. And so, so we've, church we've adopted took that, that one to, story. Literally, one account in the Bible. And now this is this is the law of following God. <laughs> that we follow the fleeces. Yeah, have We're you the set, fleeces church. Have you set out a fleece? You know, like literally mm -hmm. that's become like Christian ease. And mm -hmm. the Bible is very clear. I will lead you by my spirit. What's the spirit mm -hmm. do? Lead you into all truth. What's all truth? The word of God. So how do you grow in knowledge and wisdom? The Word of God and the Holy Spirit revealing it to you, which will be our next class after Reboot, right? <laughs> which is Root Bible, how to read, understand, and apply the Word of God to your life. Reboot your Bible time. I'm really excited about it. It's yeah. going to be a really good class because we don't, we're gonna, it's, we can't advertise it because we don't have a way to sign up for it. <laughs> but it's going to be transforming your Bible time into a life-giving relationship building hangout time with God instead of a uh, what so many people do is set the clock read it d bell dings done and move on I have done my Christian duty and there's so much more depth to it than that so that's what we're going to do uh, starting in April we'll have an ability for you to log into that and how did God um, tell us to do weekend. that by showing us the need that a lot of people didn't understand how to read their words so they were just choosing not to or they were going places in the word without the Holy Spirit and drawing misunderstandings and the Lord was like I've shown you this for a reason and you're like okay no, 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 wait. <laughs> wait, no that's not how it works in order to hear God we have to go to a big conference All right, shush. and then the person up front calls us down and gives us this big word in front of everybody and that's the only <laughs> way you know you're following God Thus right saith the Lord or right here done anyway, so yeah. or that's... you see a need and the Holy Spirit's been constantly highlighting it to you mm -hmm. uh, same for Tara 
same for for Holly, same for Kelly, same for Marty, right? Mm. When there's something straight in front of you that he keeps highlighting as a shortcoming in his body and he's highlighting it to you over and over, take the first step to be a solution in that area, to bring his freedom that he's already provided in that area. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, Why? Uh, because and that you have depends confidence in Christ. On, right. I was going to say, that depends on you being confident enough in Christ. And so there are so many stories in the word. I hate the word stories. There are so many historical accounts. accounts in the word of people that seemed like they were always confident in what they did. We got the Apostle Paul. We got Joshua with his you know, Jericho march that seemed crazy. Or David. Where there's so many people. The 12 but spies, but then the two that were so convinced and They unmoved. all seemed like they never worried about what could happen if this doesn't work. And that's the big issue in our heads, right? God says something, and then you're plagued by all of the emotion and the thoughts of, what if this doesn't work? How will I look or appear to those around me if I step out and try to do this thing and nothing happens? We get to How do that will... all the time, guys. All the time. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what people think. And think, think about David with Goliath. What, I mean, it, the Bible doesn't say, but could he have had thoughts like, oh man, what if God doesn't come through and Goliath defeats me? Oh, this isn't just a losing game. A game. This is losing my life. This isn't just losing my life. This means all of Israel will be slaves if if I don't do this thing. Oh man, this is so much pressure. I don't know that I can take it all. This is too big, God. Right? He could have had all of those thoughts. We don't see him in, dealing with that at all. So how could he be so confident? What's the difference between him? Because he was even an old. Testament covenant. Right. He did not have the Holy Spirit so like his we have. His, his, so his spirit was not regenerated like we have. So how could he, from that Old Testament experience, have us better confidence in what God had told him to do and that it was going to happen than and we do else. in our New Testament, New Covenant, one with God experience? Yeah. This seems not fair. And so if we can learn from him, we're going to tear this apart a little bit and look at how God helped David build his confidence in him. Even Don't before there off. was a Christ. It's different than you've ever heard. I know as soon as you hear David, you're like, oh, David You're like, and David and Goliath. We heard, I, know this, I know this story. I have the little <laughs> eight-page hardcover little flap Cartoons. Book. You even mm-hmm. pull it and, and Goliath goes down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's different than you've ever heard. You've got to look at it through the eyes of a new covenant. You've got to look at it through the eyes of the big picture of the commandment of the Father that that David would be in the seed line of Christ. What was he saying here? What was he breaking down that even an old covenant child can can experience having such faith that nothing else mattered? Such faith in what? The Lord. Confidence beyond his own ability. That's supernatural. And that's mm-hmm. what we'll be focusing on here. So if you haven't ever read the story of David and Goliath. Actually from the Bible. From the Bible. Not a storybook. Not a storybook. Straight <laughs> from the Bible. I'm telling you, it is so worth doing it because every single animated story, every single uh, account that we've ever found, adds things in that aren't in the word and leaves things out that are in the word. And people base their understanding of the scripture off of a cartoon they saw 20, 30 years ago and that doesn't even line up with what the word says. And so when you open your word, like what we're going to talk about in our our next series, is God will illuminate to you things that you've been believing that are wrong. He'll show you things like, oh, wait, that's not in there? I thought that was in there. What about this part? It's not in there. And it gives you a depth of what was going on that's never covered in the cute little 20-minute video. Your understanding, wisdom, and revelation will never come from anything by the Spirit except for the Word of God. Now, the Word of God can come through preaching, right? 
It can come through stories. It can come mm -hmm. through that understanding. But the depth of knowledge, wisdom, and revelation that Paul refers to will come from the Word of God or the preaching of the direct Word of God. Side note, it's the exact same thing with Noah, with with uh, the story of Jesus' birth. Remember when we went to the Creation Museum? The Ten Spies. Or not the Creation Museum. The Tower of Babel. We talked about that one yesterday. <laughs> the, what's it? The Ark Experience. Yep. We went to the Ark Experience in uh, Kentucky. It's so fun. Worth going. So worth going. It was where our, our son was potty trained. Literally, in a Literally, day. In a day. He wanted to see this so bad. The miracle he, on the he Ark. He potty trained himself <laughs> that day. He's like, we will not stop. I will go to the potty in the potty so we don't have to stop and miss anything. Yeah. And he did. One he day, was two done. and a half years old. This it was did not awesome. happen for our firstborn, mind you. We are no. not super parents. No, no, no. This one just decided that day. But he was sidetracked done. again. This the, in the Ark experience, they have a whole section of here's all the books about um, Noah, Noah and the Ark and all that are that don't Anti line Christ. up with the Bible. And they said. The twisted truth, and we say this too, twisted truth is more dangerous than a blatant lie. And they're saying all of these things uh, are putting on the image of godliness, but having no power within because they have changed what actually happened. And now it's not Bible, but everybody thinks this is Bible. Same thing happens with with uh, TV shows or, you know, they've done multiple times like the History Channel's done the story of the Bible or or the chosen with with this is what Jesus' life is like. And there are things in it that don't aren't in here. And, and that, that and confounds that and, people and confuses up. and adds to the word of God and makes it of no mm -hmm. effect because now we'll go by the traditions of man, the motions of man, not mm -hmm. the word of God. And that starts all the way from nursery rhyme books of Noah. And I know a lot of you are like, Really? We shouldn't buy a Noah nurse? No. Because you start to set an expectation of rainbows and promises and miss the whole point that sin destroyed the world. You know, that darkness and destruction that it broke God's heart to have to save one family that he may continue this line to stand up against the doom of darkness and destruction that is the devil. That he believed in the human race enough to save one family and go, you can defeat him. You can choose righteousness, goodness. You can choose light over darkness. You can do this. That's a very serious start to understanding that the battle begins at birth. And then mm -hmm. you give them like a rainbow story, like, you know, and then they read the actual account of Noah. I remember the first time Winston read the actual account and it was like, that's dark. All those people, you know what I mean, died. <laughs> They're like, yeah, yeah, because they chose not to listen. They chose not to believe. That was their mm -hmm. choice, not God's, theirs. So, All right, back to David. Where would his confidence lie? His confidence so, would lie in a lie. So a lot of us, we, we would say, you know what? I don't have anyone speaking into my life telling me that I can do these crazy things that I feel like God is asking me to do. What's, I need what a mentor. We used to crazy. say that all the time. I have to have a mentor or I'll never be able to do what God wants me to do. So let's look at David's life. We believed that David, a um, He shows up. Did he have the same attitude that the Israelite army did? No. His attitude was totally different because for 40 days, Goliath shows up. Taunts the Israelites, um, rears the, them down. Um, uses, you know, talks negatively about God. They're gone, and all the Israelites ran away. David shows up. He doesn't. His mentality was different from his um, environment, his demographic that he was growing up in. Yeah. He he was not limited. Is to Is anyone that. with me? Is anyone with me? No one. Okay, never mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, it's not I, I don't, he didn't have a friend support group but to where, help him to do it. Where did God start to train him that wait, way? Wait, we're getting to that. What no. about this? What about his brothers? His brothers, his family, they had to have been building him up that you're going to be this awesome person. God's really going to use <laughs> you and, and, uh, and God's got a ready. plan for you. <laughs> it's actually the complete opposite. When, when David shows up to the 
to the battle, obeying his dad. The, you can read it in 1 Samuel 17. David's dad sends David to go check on his brothers because all of his brothers were in this army. But not David. But not David. Why is David left out? Have you ever wondered that? That's not how they do things. They all go for certain ages, but David's not there. So David is sent to go and bring some uh, cheeses and bread. He likes his cheese. And uh, he's Wallace and Gromit. I like that show. Anyway, he goes and brings cheese. And what are they doing? What are you doing here? Just go back to your sheep. You're just here to watch the fight. Just get out of it, right? They had no expectation that he could be of any benefit to the army while he was there. Okay, pause. And they communicated pause. that way. Is there anyone in your life you're treating that way currently? You have no expectation on them, the same that God would have on them because of maybe how they act naturally or a role they play right now naturally or they're not naturally the leader in your family or they're not the one to always say something right. So you kind of uh, set them aside and don't place God's expectancies on them. Rather, you place it on the one that shows more promise in the natural. Okay, I feel that's from the Lord just to put out there. Mm -hmm. We've always got to find our confidence in the Lord and not our natural ability when it comes to ourselves, when it comes to our spouse, and when it comes to our children. Mm -hmm. So then you're thinking, okay, well, I mean, his brothers didn't, but his dad, it had to be like the Joseph and coat of many colors where he was he was the favorite. He was highlighted <laughs> that God was going to do something awesome. But you can see that yeah, that's can not make true it if either. Your dad believed because in him. anyone can make it. Because, hang on, where is it? In, oh, yeah, when Samuel when goes Samuel, to, right here, when Samuel goes to Bethlehem. He, oh, yeah, right He here. brings up every Samuel, brother except. <laughs> Samuel goes to David's family and and says, okay, Jesse. Jesse was David's dad, right? Jesse, God's going to anoint one of your kids to be the next king. And so bring all your all your kids here, and I want to go through and find, find out which one is going to be the next king. So Jesse brings all of his kids, except David. <laughs> He's like, obviously, it's, it's like not going to be David. Being left you out can't on be. Yeah. It can't be David. We'll just leave him out there with the sheep, and I'll bring all everybody else in because they're they have the qualities of a king. They're going to be the right, you know. But David, there's not a yeah. chance. Yeah. He can't. There's not. I wouldn't even cross my mind. Right? That would be half what it would have to happen in order for David to be left in the field. While all of his brothers are there. And yet Samuel, mm -hmm. listening to the Lord, recognized that none of the men standing in front of them were the one that God had chosen. So mm -hmm. the father missed it. The brothers missed it. And yet the one that listened to the Lord recognized something's missing. Mm -hmm. This is Samuel, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, is talking about this. And it says, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at the height of his stature because i have rejected him for god sees not as man sees for man looks at the outward appearance but the lord looks at the heart that's our first window into how david could be confident is because he had put his heart on the lord I love with it. the lord nothing on the outward said this was going to be king Oof. His dad didn't think that. His family didn't think that. His uh, the, his demographic, they were all running and scared in the face of danger, and he was standing up different. So how did he get to that place? How did he get first his heart right? Think about later in life. God says that David was a man after God's own heart. How did that start? We well, can see it right there with Samuel. He had history with God. It's really, you can see when he, when David was young, he's out, out with the sheep. Now for the Israelites, a shepherd was the lowest job you could do. That would be like in your imagination to be like, um, trash, trash collector me. or, or, um, somebody who cleans the sewer systems out or, or. Well, any, anybody that makes it onto dirty jobs with Mike, whatever, <laughs> yeah. anybody that has one of those jobs. That would be, that would be, uh, that would be shepherd. That would be what David was put in. And you're out there alone and a lot of times. You're out there alone. You're out there for days or even weeks on end. 
You have to fend for yourself. You're protecting the sheep. No, rain, snow, sleet, whatever, uphill, uh, both ways. How many right now are actually thinking, that would be kind of nice? <laughs> like, just out <laughs> He has the to Lord live off sheep. of the land. He would probably bring some things from home, but you got to imagine that wouldn't last him the whole time. He had to know how to ration, ration how to eat what was growing out in nature, all that kind of stuff. And so he's out there. And what does he do? You don't see him anywhere in the word where he's out there. How come I have the worst job? Why don't any of my brothers doing this? This, I mean, here I am just trying to obey my mom and dad. And what do I get? The worst job. And how many of us have been tempted to think that way, communicate that? I'm just trying to be obedient to God and look what I'm doing. Nothing, nothing of importance. I'm just raising the kids and making meals and laundry and teaching kids meals, laundry. There's nothing going on here. This is the worst job of them all or whatever it might be. I wake up, Mm -hmm. I go to work, I pay the bills, I come home. I wake up, I go to the work, I pay the bills, right? Mm -hmm. There's this this tendency to have that whisper that you want to latch on to that what I'm doing has no value. And Mm -hmm. for that reason, I can't do it unto the Lord. But in the middle of doing what was thought of as the worst of the worst jobs, what do we see David doing? Worshiping God. He had brought his harp out there. And you can even see, you know what, I need to write it down and add it into the notes. There are multiple psalms in in the book of Psalms. Psalms is just a collection of songs that the Israelites use. It's like their hymn book, right? And uh, there are multiple songs that were written by David From there. while watching the sheep. Our made it. They made it into the Bible because what was he doing? In the middle of all that yuck, basically, he learned to set his heart on God. He chose to worship God. And God was training him for the future to not get his eyes on the things around him, not let those things influence him, but to stay connected to him no matter what was going on. That's a key key thing for us. That in the middle of yuck, in the middle of less than we want to see in our lives. In the natural. In the natural. That we can still connect with his heart, be people after his own heart, and worship in the middle of tough situations. Look at Paul and Silas. They get whipped. They get thrown in jail in Philippi because of the accusations of a guy who had a demon-possessed girl, right? And they set them free. They're doing good. They're doing what God wants. And they get thrown in jail, whipped, beaten, and put in the stocks. In And what do they do? Abandon they worship. God. Oh, they worship? You don't see them whining, complaining. This is so hard. I thought when I followed God, everything was supposed to work out. Everything's supposed to be easy. We must have missed God. We must have completely disobeyed God somewhere. Where's our source of of, of uh, lack and obedi- or disobedience, God, because everything I'm doing is not working right the way I think that the world would celebrate success. So so we have to change everything. You know? con- then your confidence is in the ways of the world. Your confidence is not in the Lord. Mm-hmm. When you set your expectation on anything that's outside of what God's shown you or where he has you, if his mercies are new each day, if his grace is enough, then where you're at is the perfect place to worship and it's the perfect place to be that day. And in obedience and listening to his voice that day, he moves you to the next day where his mercies are new and his glory and his grace is enough for that day. And he empowers you to live that day. Why? Because your confidence is not in who you'll become. Your confidence is not in what you can do or where you are. Your confidence is in the Lord and doing the mandate that he's given you to do where you're at and he what he had he had to do the sheep and a mandate to worship the lord has had that mandate even in the old testament and so he took that very seriously you say that you see the same thing in joseph's life okay we can it's easy just to read through again a storybook version of the coat of many colors right but this man and every a couple chapters everything works everywhere out he turned people hated him he got the, you know, if he, like two steps forward, 10 steps back kind of scenario. In the world's viewpoint. In the world's viewpoint. 
And if we continue to look at the world, then you will abandon God and his day. This day is enough for you. Grace, glory, and confidence in Christ because it is not what you decided it should look like. And Joseph even had a dream. Now, I don't know if he ever had conversations with heaven, but I'd be like, this is not the dream you gave me. No, he trusted the Lord and not what he saw or experienced. And he took the day and he honored the Lord on that day because where was his confidence? In the Lord. Uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 says, If then you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Then verse 2, set your mind on things above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is now is hidden with Christ in God. And verse 4, when Christ who is your life or our life is revealed, then you also will be, re be revealed with him in glory. There, verse 5, therefore consider the members of your earthly body as dead to immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, greed, which all amount to idolatry. He said, just get rid of all those passions. I, I have to I have to be this. I have to do this. I need to prove to my mom or my dad or my family that I'm a success even though I'm following God, that that God still, you know, that I haven't abandoned the things of value to the world. Why? Your motive has changed. Your confidence is in yourself and your success is based on evil and darkness. Mm -hmm. Nobody teaches this. Why? I don't know. But it's the truth. If you are judging your circumstances in the world's mindset or you're judging it by how you can be viewed, then you've stepped outside of your confidence being in Christ and there is nothing good waiting there. Our confidence is in Christ alone. It doesn't matter how other people look at our lives. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how other church people look at our lives. It doesn't matter how our family looks at our lives. It matters that we are surrendered to the Lord, that we build each other up in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, that he is the center of our life and his mandate is our mandate, and that's where we draw our confidence from. And one of the ways that we see God then, in addition to uh, putting his heart for worship in at a young age, he also allows troubles, issues to come his way. And for David, it was a lion and a bear coming to steal the sheep. And what is what is? I love that lion and bear are in Revelation too. Sorry, go what ahead. What is a? Uh, uh, yeah, now you got my head thing. <laughs> uh, a normal hired hand would flee at that point. Jesus like, even says that. Take the sheep. The hired hand would like go. They would disappear, take the sheep, I'll come back and shepherd the rest. Um, that would be a normal mode of operation. But what did David's dad ask him to do? Take care of the sheep. And so out of obedience, even when it was difficult, he still chose to take care of the sheep. And how he did that was he would have to go up against the lion and against the bear. Now, none of us are like, yeah, now that is comforting. That gives me confidence. I'm going to have troubles and issues in my life that God even wants to be there for a second for our own ability to grow in him, Think about to it. develop God our trust in him. Why did Jesus to go through the desert? That's hard for some people to swallow. God wanted Jesus to be in the desert. So much so that his Holy Spirit led him there. Okay, don't forget that there is a train. Now, Holy mm -hmm. Spirit led him there. If he was all man and all God, he could have chose not to go. He could have chose not to conquer those temptations. The choice was still there. But going where the Holy Spirit says go means he's given you enough to overcome. So those lions coming, those bears coming, being assigned to those sheep, that wasn't too much. He knew he would be fine. Why? Because it was his confidence in his own strength. The Bible goes repeatedly I don't know why, but it describes David multiple times as not attractive and small. Ruddy. <laughs> like, it even goes out of its way to express to you that in the natural, there was nothing uh, super about David. His family didn't think so. Uh, Saul didn't think so. <laughs> you know, like, uh, Saul's daughter didn't think so, except that he was popular for a time. Right? That it goes out of its way to go, it was his heart. It was his heart towards me and his confidence in me 
alone. And that's all that it should be for us also in raising our kids. It's all that should be for them. Mm -hmm. I'd have a talk with someone the other day, just at school yesterday, who was not doing great on the information of education. And I said, listen, this stuff will pass away. They're questions, big deal. And you'll learn them if you need to learn them, but it's not worth you know, stealing your confidence in Christ away or letting it affect your heart. It's just information. Like we need to separate the the purposes and the plans for us and our kids where the confidence can be on the Lord in all things and not in and of our own ability to accomplish things. Mm -hmm. James chapter one, and we're just going to hit this lightly because I think we hit it really hard last week yeah. about trials and temptations. But James chapter one, verse two says, consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And then it continues on. It keeps uh, that endurance may have perfect. Wait, wait, I could it's I could make that a whole separate class. You could just look um, that up in the Greek and be James. That's James chapter one, verse two and three. So God allows various trials in our life because they are what he wants us to use to develop that history with him develop our ability to trust him, to stand with him, to rely on his promises and who he is, regardless of what is happening in the natural. So that we can is see that, our confidence is in him alone and rely on that easier in the future. Now, am I saying God will put sickness on someone so that he can teach them? No. That's not what I'm saying. No, liken but, it to a good father and how much better if it's the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. Liken it to a good father. I'm going to let my kids go through difficult situations so that they can learn through them, come back, regroup, and see that they can make it, and then let them go through a more difficult situation that's not as hard this time by their choices, by their overcoming, by what they're relying on. I would never put sickness on my children and see how they do. Okay, and he says, if, if we're good parents, the Bible says specifically a father, then how much better is he? I'm not going to give my kid a stone and call it when he asks for bread, right? The same idea. You've got to separate what the word says are temptations and tests and what the word says uh, that will come in a dark world and those things that come in a dark world that he's given us victory over already, that they have no impact on us and we can stand firm in that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So one of the ways God trained David was even with that lion and that bear. And we can see that in 1 Samuel 17. Uh, I'll start with verse 32. This is where um, David is talking with King Saul about how Saul should trust him to uh, defeat this Philistine. So hang on. I want to read it out of my new or my new american standard 1977 version because that's just fun all right so verse 32 david said to saul let no man's heart fail on account of him talking about goliath your servant will go and fight this philistine then saul said to david you are not able to go against this philistine to fight with him but for you are but a youth while he has been a warrior from his youth but David said to Saul, Your servant was tending his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went out after him and attacked him and rescued from his mouth. And when he rose up against me, I seized by the beard and struck him and killed him. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them since he has taunted the armies of the living God. David saw this Goliath no different than a lion or a bear trying to keep him from being able to obey and serve God. God or David's dad had said, Go tend to my flocks, watch over them. When a lion or a bear came against them, he eliminated the issue. Then Goliath comes and says, I'm going to do that same thing to your whole country. I'm going to eliminate your ability to obey God, to do what, what would please your even your dad. And he's like, well, there it is. He's came against God. Yeah. There's, there's not a chance I could lose. 
Why? Because he had history with God. And what I think is really interesting here, because he says for both, I don't have, oh, anyway, we'll just say it. Uh, I think it's really interesting that his history with the lion and the bear, he had clubbed it to death, right? But with Goliath, he doesn't rely on the old, his previous ways of defeating the things that came against him. He does it differently. And I would, I would suggest that it's because of his heart after God. God gave him the wisdom that he needed how to defeat him. You don't see a prayer session here. You don't see the Holy Spirit. It doesn't say, then the Spirit of God came upon him, enabling him to do these awesome things. You don't see any of that. He but was anointed. he walked in the anointing that was on him from Samuel, from Samuel, anointing him as king. And because he was anointed, he was able to know what was to do, what right thing to do. So he didn't try to go after Goliath with a club. And, or this one, I think it's interesting. It's so weird. I want to look in the Greek because that, this one says he grabbed it by the, the mane beard. or by the beard. And other versions say he grabbed it by the jaw and then clubbed it. And then... Uh, That's the bear though, maybe. The new ones, the newer versions say he grabbed it by the fur. That's all very quite different. <laughs> so be fun. See, studying the word is fun. I can't wait for that class. But he's anointed. That's what happened between the field mm -hmm. and going before Saul was Samuel anointing him. What mm -hmm. happens after salvation for us? The anointing comes on us mm -hmm. through the Holy Spirit. You're anointed. Jesus uh, is anointed. He even said that in the, in the synagogue that uh, I am an, what, how is it in Isaiah? Marty could help me with this. <laughs> I am anointed to preach, preach the good the news to the poor, set the captives free. And I, that's my own paraphrase. That is not an exact scripture uh, copy, whatever. But he is anointed. He didn't lose that anointing when he went to heaven. He's still anointed. That's still on him to carry out because guess what? We are the body of Christ. That same anointing that is in him flows through his body. Yep. That same anointing that is in him is in effect when the word says, it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives within me. You have the same anointing that Christ has to carry out the fullness of everything that God is putting on your heart to do in his timing, by his ability, how he wants it done. It's not worth spending your time murmuring and complaining. It's worth worshiping and praying. It's worth us. We have the ability now to pray in tongues, as Paul says. I'm glad that I do it more than you all. Because so much revelation comes in that when we can pray outside of our natural understanding. Okay, when that anointing came, nothing changed. He was still him. He was still a shepherd at that point. He got an audience before the king, King Saul, because Samuel anointed him. And when he went in, you know, he could have been like, ah, oh, just a shepherd here, delivered lunch. Some guy came and anointed me and said I was something. No, he didn't. Mm -hmm. He was like, here's your servant, the Lord. And uh, that guy's got to go down. He's offending God's people. Like, it was just like very clear. Can you imagine just... Picture, you know, five foot nothing, redhead, off the field, shepherd, no armor, which is the first thing Saul sees, right? Mm -hmm. Standing there saying, what's your guys' problem? Uh, I said guys', I need to remove guys that. Is... Uh, this guy's got to go down. Yo. Right? Why, why are you pointing at me? <laughs> this guy's got to go down. <laughs> but if you really break down the story, it's beautiful. Here's this faithful life, loves the Lord. Uh, that's what draws all men, the love of the Lord, right? Then we accept him in salvation. Then he's anointed. Now he's ready to win battles for the Lord. And that's what's true about you. And any thought that you have that does not line up with those truths is a lie. That truth. What do we have to do with those thoughts? We have to arrest those thoughts. We have to take them captive. Like it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, 
We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. Right. I think that's uh, so beautiful because, because it's not that it's against did. you. It's against the knowledge of God. Who God is in you is the problem. You are listening to thoughts that say he is not who he is in you. Yeah. Goliath was sent mm-hmm. by Satan to mock the Israelites, to mock the Father, mm-hmm. to uh, tear down and break down how they viewed the strength of God. Mm-hmm. And David was sent in, anointed, to remind them that it's not human strength right. that will defeat you. It is the very God that you are attacking mm-hmm. that will defeat you through me. And take every thought captive. So what does that mean? And it means we have to arrest those thoughts that tell us anything that doesn't line up with what the Bible says. We rely on the Holy Spirit to illuminate the lie. We lie, that's kind of funny. Anyway, and tell it the truth. What is the truth? What the Word says. That Jesus is anointed. Jesus is in me. I'm dead. I no longer live. He now lives through me. That means I'm anointed to do everything that God is putting on my heart to do. And that's why it's so important. We know the truth. We know what the Word says. That's why we need to memorize what the Scripture says, know what God likes, know what He doesn't like. So then we can live out like what it says in 1 John 5, 14 and 15, that this is the confidence that we have before Him, that Mm -hmm. if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request which we have asked from him. And then it goes on. We to know say we that have it. It brings him glory to answer that. Exactly. And then yes. And it brings him glory and and expands the kingdom for us to do this. So we have to go to him, know what he says. And then if what you're seeing in front of you is not lining up with what the word says, ask him. Yeah. God, this isn't lining up. Show me. Just show me. I'm not going to say show me what I have to do because it may be that I have to do nothing. Show me. Teach me on this. And listen. And he will lead you. He will guide you. He will show you how he is right. already planned to Prepared. defeat that uh, enemy, that obstacle, that issue in your life or in the lives of others because of our reliance on him. And then just like David, we worship God. I've asked yeah. you. Don't I overlook worship. that part. Don't overlook that part yourself and with your kids. Some of our f- favorite prayer times with our kids, they love it, is instead of praying, we'll sing songs. Not a, None of us <laughs> are singers, okay? There's no none band. None of us have harps. There's no tunes. But we just stir up the Holy Spirit in us, and we sing psalms and hymns together. So... Uh, stirring up our thankfulness and who he is and and some of our favorite things to do. And the first time we ever did, I was like, this is awkward to my flesh, right? But now it's just normal for us because we can be that because he says that's how you'll stir each other up with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. So why don't we do it? Why do we cut that off? Because it's uncomfortable to the flesh. Well, David did it all the time. So now anytime you go and read this account, and I would encourage you to go out and read it after this class, Mm -hmm. no longer see it as a rags to riches story. Like a lot of times it's portrayed that and God will promote you, you know, and David didn't have it good after that. So stop looking at the natural results and look at a human being who loves the Lord. The Lord anointed him to overcome those that would try to limit God working in the earth. By making it as though he only had mere human ability. And then going in and saying, I will pick the smallest human who has a heart after me. And I will anoint him to destroy the works of the devil in a moment when everyone else stood in defeat believing it couldn't happen. He shows you what the anointing that we now live in can do to defeat the works of the devil. That's our goal, not rags to riches, not to become kings, not to be called out. Our goal is to worship God, to recognize the anointing, and to stop any plans or purposes of the evil one with simplicity, not taking on Saul's armor, 
not making it flashy, not trying to make it, you know, did we record that so everyone can see that? I know that's a big thing today. <laughs> Don't get me right. But you know what I mean? Like it is to do the Lord's work by his anointing as he says, do it and not allow anything else to veer you from that purpose and plan and helping others do the same and mm-hmm. not care about the outcome mm-hmm. because the Lord is the Lord of the outcome. That's mm-hmm. it. So now you read that story and understand that is nothing in compared to what we deal with today. You will not demean my God. You will not demean his children, his anointed, his righteous one. You know, David didn't even stand up there and like my weak brothers and those silly Israelites. Like, yeah, he was mad they didn't stand up to him, but he still defended them because they were God's kids. Right. So it's not about cutting each other down either. It's about keeping our heart right towards the Lord, that our confidence would be in him alone and moving forward, as he says, not for an outcome we desire, not for self-promotion, not for recognition, but to defeat the works of the evil one. Mm -hmm. That is it. You will never read that story the same ever. Mm -hmm. I promise you. That was Joseph's only call was to defeat the works of the evil one, to show that God can use the things of this world to progress the kingdom. And even the hurts of this world to progress the kingdom Mm -hmm. through forgiveness, through a heart that's set on the Lord. How much more today when we have the Holy Spirit, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead in us, anointing us, flowing out of us. If we will surrender all of our preconceived notions of what the outcome to the battle is or what we're called to do because of our natural stature or our children's natural stature, or our husband's natural stature, and we align with the anointing of God and the mandate of God that comes from his word. When our confidence is in Christ, it is unmovable. So immovable, let's... let's Immovable. Immovable. <laughs> let's, let's summarize it. What did David do? How can we have that same confidence in God that David did? Right. One, he hung out with God. You can get in your he, underwear and dance like David. He... Um, <laughs> He hung out with God. Without a band, he was able to hang out with God. Without a worship team leading him in it, he was able to hang out with God. Even while doing things out of obedience that seemed mundane, he hung out with God. Even when it was not convenient, he hung out with God. Even when he didn't have the priests at the temple teaching him, he hung out with God. And so what do we do? We don't have to depend on other people to be our sources of God's voice in our life. Just like David We can hang out with God on our own, hear his voice, get to know his voice. Am I saying it's bad to listen to online teachers or play, you know, things on YouTube or or join classes like this one? No, I'm not saying that's bad. But if you only do that and and never hang out with God for yourself, then your viewpoint is always going to be God speaks to them. He doesn't speak to me because you've given him no ability to speak to you in any other way than speaking through them. But God wants to speak to you just like he does them. And so you need to hang out with God. Get with him where you can begin to learn to hear his voice. So that was, that's what David started with. And then ask God to lead you. When he tells you something to do or say, do it without delay. Do it his way right away. If you're not sure what he wants to do, Guess what? The word gives you a ton of things that he shows you, that he wants you to do. And when you look at that, don't give in to the temptation of, oh, that's that's just insignificant. That's too little. I know it's, and you know, God's asked me to do that, but I don't you see how that will You want me to go to the nations. Help. Right. Oh, man, we have talked to so many people. <laughs> they're like, we're just waiting for God's call for us to go to the nations because we know that's our mandate. So what are you doing right now? I'm waiting. <laughs> Uh, are you going to the neighborhoods? No, no, I don't know. That that would take time out of my <laughs> hangout with the family. Nations. No, no. And they won't do that, and they end up never going to the nations. No, what do they you do? When God says to do something little, even if it feels insignificant to you, obey right away. Because the words at Luke 16, 10, he who is faithful in a very little thing is faithful also in much. And he who is unrighteous in a very little thing is unrighteous also in much. Remember, righteousness is in you. You've been made righteous, but the 
that you might live in it. Remember that word exists there. That you might live in it. Mm -hmm. Okay, that happens multiple times in the word. You've been made it, but whether or not you'll live it is still up to you. And so you have to be faithful in the little insignificant feeling things right now because that will open the door for you to take on bigger challenges. Isn't that exciting? You can have bigger <laughs> trials, bigger Woo! troubles that God is calling you to yes. defeat because says, it's yes. not about you. Right. It's about releasing God's anointing to change things, not just for you, not just for your family, but for kingdom the results. kingdom of God to produce kingdom results and set people free from slavery, which was what was about to happen with the country of Israel with Goliath if David had not already had those little wins and a little bit bigger wins. Right. And built that history with God. And remember, every single Israelite was a chosen generation, the Bible says. Chosen people. Mm -hmm. But as far as we know, David's heart was the only one that was after the Lord at that time. A whole nation of people crouching as this Goliath, this doom and darkness from the realm of sin, sickness, and destruction downs the Father. They all cowered mm -hmm. and they all had the same father they all had access to the same heart no matter where they were to sing to the lord to glorify him but david chose to do it david chose to draw his confidence from the lord and not from himself mm -hmm. that's huge and you listen to these stories and you think oh then there's just one no you're the one you're the one there's not just one we're the one the body of Christ that is now anointed to do the works of the gospel. We are the ones. Mm -hmm. We stand there with our confidence fully in Christ and not in ourselves to defeat the works of the enemy. And we train up our families to do the same because our mm -hmm. confidence is not in our flesh. It's not in natural mm -hmm. understanding. It's not in our diplomas. It's not, I'm not saying, you know, you can't get an education or whatever, but that's not where your confidence is ever, ever. In fact, he purposely picked unlearned men in the word, ironically, because it didn't get in the way, I would imagine, as much as knowing who was right before them, their Lord, their Messiah. Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions, comments, yes. psalms, hymns, spiritual songs? We, uh, oops, that's the wrong one. Remember, these are we have a bunch of people who have joined us through our website, through the rootbible.com website. They've gone to the uh, course of the real you and when you sign up there for free you get access for your whole family to join classes like this uh, every class this week is talking about how to have confidence in christ using the historical account of david and except there's preschool classes teaching that there's elementary there's junior high and senior high and the family class and this one all teaching the same thing so that you as a family can grow spiritually and help each other be accountable to put these things in action. Yes. So all the generations in your family can put the word in action in their life and Thank be you, grounded Lord. in the word Thank you, and Lord. ignited by the spirit. And so that's why we're doing what we're doing. If you want to join us for a future one, sign up now. Yeah. Uh, but we want to go to those who are part of our team, or I should say, Kelly, not really our team, but our family, our, family. our real family online. Yes. yes. So what questions? I see Kelly's got a hand raised. I already know you can see me because I, I'm against that. Yes, you're a silhouette <laughs> of sun. <laughs> anyway, this is um, my first class here. I don't know why I didn't catch it up or earlier. But yeah, you're in serious trouble. Me here exactly today because it's exactly what I needed to hear. Oh, thank this you, one Lord. I thought I had a turn on my, a turn or like a, uh, what do you call it? Like a, something on my shoe or in my feet that it was, you know, hurting. Um, I took it off. I mean, God took it off. You know, he showed me the word honor, 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 which means respect. So that's, that's taking care of it. Honor. Said, okay, yes. This is honor. awesome. This is great. Then all of a sudden, there is another rock on my shoe. And I'm thinking, really? I thought the biggest uh, rock on my shoe was kind of, we're working on our relationship, my husband and I. But then now here comes my family from Colombia. <laughs> and, 
literally in two days they all swarm like bees like biting me remind me in the flesh of why i am living like this um i am not supposed to live like this i i came from a different background i'm supposed to look different and i'm thinking oh my in questioning me why why i'm homeschooling i should not be home i mean in in all different directions yes Mm -hmm. yes from my home, from my Must appearance, be in the air. from my my decisions, and of one moment I'll keep fighting. I say, no, 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 Kelly, don't go back there. No, yeah. go back there. It doesn't. Mm-hmm. It comes from your mom. It came from your brother. It came from your aunt. It came from yep. your, everybody swarming you, even your friend. And she said, no. So anyway, I needed this class because Thank I've been Lord. fighting that because I don't want to go back there. But yes. what is there right? No, they are not right. They're not right. Right. How do they believe? No, they're not. They're not reading the Bible. No, 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 no. Right, so, right. Anyway, this is just perfect. Yes. I have to stand confident that yep. every decision, you know, that it has been made is because God has, yes. um, you know, put He's it preparing into uh, you. my spirit and yes. by listening and obeying. And it can't be wrong. It can't. It, no. it can't be. It's, it's, he told me right. I will do it even if it looks pathetic in the eyes of my family. That's yep. the way mm-hmm. I'm living right now. So, yeah. And this nation really good. needs us to make these small wins now because of what God wants to do through us to launch things, potentially even generationally, to set this uh, country yeah. for him. And it's going to take us doing this these This country is blessed because wins. of the Lord, but mm-hmm. it is be- the focus has been turned to the blessing. And so those that are refusing that and turning back to the Lord— and they don't look like they're living in that blessing because they refuse to enjoy that which they call God and is actually evil. They've turned to the Lord and the rest of those that are still living in the blessing are like, what are you doing? And you're like, I'm not living that way. It's not honoring the Lord. It's not glorifying the Lord. And people have their focus on it and not him. And those that are turning and not living the way uh, people think they should are like, oh, what's wrong with them? Those homeschooling, those living by their means, those downsizing, those making sacrifices so that the kingdom can grow, not their personal existence on this earth. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord can bless you. Don't get me wrong. He wants to bless his children, but he doesn't at the detriment of you. If you're chasing blessings, if you're chasing what others say is important and it's not him, then it's not worth chasing and it's not even worth having. It's Mm -hmm. such a powerful fact to live out of when our confidence is in the Lord. Our confidence does not rely in stuff, in um, self-appearance. Right in where we live, and and the Lord will take you on that journey because He wants you to rely on Him. Mm-hmm. I've seen people all around me go through that journey, and it's worth it to me. Mm-hmm. Yes, no, it is. It is. It's, it's, it's funny how can you when you think you have one thing out, you're like, Woo-hoo, then it comes back. But it's in in, <laughs> in my benefit. It is yes, really in, in, mm-hmm. in, in in the best thing Honestly. for me. Because it just grows my relationship with him. Yeah. And then ultimately it's standing strong. It's going to be a life changing for my family. I yes. Have right now. Ultimately. Even for my friends. They yep. can't. But when they see the results of why I walk the way I walk yes. with God. Yes. Then it will be, oh my goodness. You when know? your house is untouched in a storm. When your family is healthy and set apart. When your kids are safe and living life for Christ. All of a sudden the things of this world become less important. Mm-hmm. And then if they get added on, they're glorious because you hold them with an open hand, enjoy them, and easily give them away. It's it's so powerful to live God's way. That's really good. Thank you for sharing. It must mm-hmm. be in the air. I think the enemy is getting nervous because family rising up and, like, coming against um, how you're <laughs> choosing to live in obedience to Christ seems to be happening a lot lately. So you are not alone. And just stand firm because that, that is the spirit of Antichrist. And even with and can hide behind good intentions, based in the world. So, uh, you overcame, woohoo! And you'll continue to. All right. Any other comments or questions? Okay, we're gonna pray you guys out. You gonna sing a song for us? Nope. (laughs) I'll get you a harp. (laughs) Thank you, Father. We glorify your name. Thank you. I thank you that you are training us to be people after your own heart, 
that do mighty exploits exploits with you. Yes, Lord. Not for you, not around you, not in the name of, but that you are teaching us to yes. release you in all that you are through us. Yes. Because you are bigger, you are greater, you yes. are more powerful than anything in this world. And as we follow you and simply say yes to what you say yes to, simply say no to the things you say no to, yes. you are setting us on a trajectory to impact the world, the kingdom of darkness, for you with so much light that yes. it could only be attributed to you. Yes. Lord, you know that's our heart. Teach us to walk in your ways. Yes. Teach us to worship through trials. Yes. Teach us to uh, celebrate and God, and God, consider God, it pure God. joy when God, trials God. come our way. Yes. So that we God, can God, be God, faithful Jesus. in the little things. You're so good, God. We put our mind and our hearts on you today. Lead us and guide us in all truth that you may be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Father. All right, you all. Thanks for joining us. Uh, We will see you all next week. If you want to be part of the conversation next week, Go to root. Oh, well, that's the wrong one. That's good though. Rootbible.com. Rootbible.com. And join the real you. And yeah. we would love to hear feedback. We'd love to hear what God's doing in you. And uh, we'll continue this next week. The real you. Yeah. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Love you guys. I felt like I had a tongue and you'd have the interpretation. Uh, I felt like you were supposed to share something, but I didn't know what it was and you didn't jump in. <laughs> so it was a tongue. You okay interpreting tongues? <laughs> well.